Hi, Jennifer. Hi, how are you? I'm great. I Dream Girls was the movie of my childhood, so I'm so excited to be talking to you. <laughs> wow, how old are you? Uh, 28. Oh, baby, you was what, 13? <laughs> yeah, and I was obsessed. <laughs> wow. Well, obsessed. It's me. <laughs> What did it mean to you personally to carry on Aretha Franklin's legacy in this film? Everything. Oh my God, everything. I mean, she's an icon and she's someone I've always looked up to and admired. And then someone I wanted to portray as well. It was a dream of mine coming off of dream girls. They said, well, what's your dream role after this? And I was like to play Aretha Franklin. So for it to now manifest, but the tricky part was Effie and Aretha is from the same era. So, oh my God, how am I going to make this different? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where it's two different things. That was the challenge for the actor in me. Uh, it was an honor to uh, carry on her legacy by being a part of this film and to um, sort of bring to life uh, character that you don't hear that much about when you hear about the history of Aretha Franklin. You don't hear that much about her mother. Um, and so for be able to to be able to bring to audiences um, the understanding and the knowledge of just how impactful her mother was in her life, even though she was only in her life for a short time, um, for me was an honor. And and I know that Aretha was very much involved in uh, you know working on this film until she passed away. So I know that she wanted her mother represented in this film. So I'm really honored that they chose me to do it. Well, I mean, it was it was it was a big responsibility on, on some level to be depicting, you know, a real guy who was very important in her life and helped define her as an artist. And also he was a pretty important guy himself. So I think not everyone sort of deals with that when they play a real person that you want to honor his legacy. Obviously, she was carrying the bigger weight. You know, there's only a few people that are going to judge my depiction of Jerry Wexler, but there's millions of people that are going to judge her depiction of Aretha. But, uh, you know, personally, I, it was, it, it's an honor to, to tell these stories and to do it well. And I think that Liesl did a great job in, in executing it. I mean, I, I kind of feel like it was so powerful, so meaningful that if this is the only film I make, I'll be good because it was, you know, it was very much a dream come true. Um, I was able to work with a writer that I love, who is a, one of my oldest friends, you know, and we were able to bring so much, you know, black woman authenticity. And then I was able to cast, you know, my favorite actors in film and on Broadway, which is, you know, my background is in theater. So to be able to bring them into my first film was, you know, was just a true joy. And then, to have people, I know I, I felt strongly that everybody should be singing live when we were shooting, that there should, this was not going to be a movie made in, in the, you know, in a, in a studio. This is a movie that was going to be made live on set. Um, Aretha has had this emotional intensity and I knew that to, to, to create that authenticity, it was going to have to be that way on set. And, you know, to be able to listen to these world-class voices singing their hearts out every day on set was just, you know, it was one of the greatest joys of my life. I, I still feel so privileged. And we don't often get to see you in like serious roles like this one. Why did you want to play this role? Uh, I don't know. I, I was just attracted to the, the uh, first of all, you know, to work with Liesl Tommy, who's a great uh, uh, visionary and uh, then work with Forrest Whitaker and Jennifer Hudson sandwich myself between two Oscar award winners, you know, I, I want, I want to eat, let's go. <laughs> that makes you better. You know what I mean? You challenge yourself. I love working with, you know, uh, with, with people on certain levels because it makes you bring your A game. And um, so I just want to, and I love the character. I just thought that he was, uh, he on paper, he read like he was this villain, but he was also the romantic lead. And, you know, for somebody to actually be able to bring himself to strike women means that he has a hate for women in some way. But I always look at the why, because mm -hmm. the why is at the end of the day, he's a little boy that's hurting and damaged people, damaged people. Mm -hmm. And so instead of creating a monster, I try to create a human. And, um, you know, you love him and you hate him. 
and you, but there's something that you like about them. You know, I think, I kind of feel like Aretha Franklin's been around my whole life. Was there a moment, do you remember when you were young that you were like, wow, this is Aretha? Um, you know what was crazy is I had a lot of those moments doing, during filming mm. or doing research in this mm. that I didn't realize, like you just said, Jennifer, you, you, Dream Girls was the movie of my childhood. I didn't realize how much, how present Aretha was in my childhood until filming or doing research. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's her amazing grace. We've been singing in church that I grew up singing in church. You know what I mean? That's her, you know, song or that was her influence. That taught me that, or I discovered that while filming. I love that. I love that feeling when you dive into your favorite artist and you're like, oh, you did this too. That's yes. That. It was yeah. a lot of those moments that I had. Well, it's weird, you know, I, I I mean, I heard her on the radio when I was a kid, but I think oddly the first time that I really took her in was in the Blues Brothers movie. You know, I was like a big John Belushi fan when I was a kid. So I think that would be the first time that I really was like, wow, that's Aretha Franklin. Yeah, you know, that's where it happened for me. I'm sure it's different uh, uh, for most people, uh, but that was, you know, my recollection of really knowing who she was and being like, that's a force of nature. There's a moment at the beginning of the film at the, the party right in the beginning where two men are like flirty with each other and it reads as queer. Why was that included in the film? Well, why shouldn't it be included in the film? Yeah, I mean, I loved it, but. <laughs> I mean, and I, I did kind of feel like, let me put that in there right at the top. So everybody understands the values of, you know, of, of, our, of us, of our film and of, you know, and of Aretha. Her sister was a lesbian and she was, you know, a, 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 a proud and loving supporter of her sister at a time when that was still pretty radical, um, you know, to be an out lesbian. And I, and I just felt for me, the thing was, what are Aretha Franklin's values? What are the, um, and what are my values? Where do they meet? And to make sure that they landed in the film. You had the honor of working with like icon, like you're an icon yourself, but working with like Forrest Whitaker and Mary J. Blige was, what were you thinking? Like when Mary J. Blige flips that table in the, <laughs> what were you, what was going on in your head? If you had any thoughts? <laughs> See, I, I guess I was double-minded in that moment because as Aretha, I'd imagine that was devastating because in the, yeah. in the scene, it's, it's her and Diana Washington and Diana Washington is one of her idols and you're flipping over the table while I'm trying to tribute to a song. And then for me, Jennifer Hudson, I'm like, wait a minute. So we got Mary J. Blige and I'm Aretha right now. What's happening? So it was a, it was a lot of different moments, but we had to like kind of block the, the reality of it, of a Mary J. Blige being here with Jennifer Hudson and out to be able to be Diana Washington and Aretha Franklin in that moment. In character. You know, yeah. I laughed out loud when uh, Forrest Whitaker like cursed you out the family cookout. Was that kind of like a surreal moment, you know, having <laughs> just like, I know you're playing a character, but like as a fan of, I'm assuming you're a fan of Forrest Whitaker because who is on? Yeah, like, absolutely. That like? <laughs> I mean, that, that scene was, was, you know, was dope. A lot about me and his scenes was, you know, um, powerful scenes because yeah. he was his intention was to you know it was to 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 punk me and my intention was not to be punked so mm -hmm. you know and he, he sunned me on that scene but you know and it, and he went to whatever he had to do to you know to to prove his point but I'll tell you the scene that, that so that scene was was cool but when that man pulled that gun out on me yeah. I said hey that ain't not in the script. <laughs> <laughs> I and and that one, you know, for me, I was like, yo, that 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 was dope because everybody it took the energy of the scene up a notch. And yeah. So I just loved working with with Forrest and um just going toe to toe, man. We we a lot of scenes and the greatest thing is after some scenes he would pat me on my back and it was beautiful work. Wow, that impression was great. <laughs> and you had this very tender moment with Jennifer Hudson. I mean, the, all the moments with you and Jennifer Hudson are you and Aretha, your character and Aretha's character um, were really tender and beautiful. Um, but I, that one, the one at the end when uh, Aretha's going through it, having the breakdown uh, was really powerful to watch. And I wondered what it was like for you to film that scene. Um, Liesl Tommy, our incredible director, uh, was very hands off 
in in the absolute right way as far as that scene was concerned. She, you know, Jennifer is incredible in this role and uh, such a committed actress and so focused and egoless. She was just about telling the story, and so um, when it got came time to shoot that scene. Um, Liesl just sort of made the set a very safe, quiet space for us. And then so that we we all understood what the scene was and what it was about. But she had a very just gentle touch at that moment. And it was almost as if even though you'd, if you've ever been on a film set, you know what it's like to have all the different cameras running and, and the noise and all that stuff. And it was just a very quiet, safe, serene, almost like ghost-like space that Liesl created so that Jennifer and I could just settle in and play that moment for what it was supposed to be and the story that we're trying to tell in that moment in Aretha's life where she comes from her darkest spot, darkest place and, and rises up out of that. Um, and so it was almost as if no one was on set with us when we were doing that. And that's, I, I, I attribute that to Liesl giving us the space. So I, I was thinking a lot about like Aretha's legacy with, you know, LGBTQ folks mm -hmm. um, and the idea of like respect and how that the song and how it um, like people of all races, all ethnicities, all minorities uh, just wanted to demand respect for themselves and what that did for LGBTQ folks. I love that she was just a representation of equality, like myself, you know what I mean? I think that was a point, a, a very important thing to put on, put out there for people to know about her as a person. Mm -hmm. And it adds to why we all love her so much and, and um, to this day, you know? Aretha is someone who was very much an activist and, and very much sort of spoke her mind and, and, and advocated uh, for, you know, civil rights. And she was a supporter of the LGBTQ community as well. And I think um, her part of her legacy will be that her, her voice and what she sang about and the pain and the joy and the, the, the emotion that she sang from um, was a balm and uh, uplifted so many people. And I, I, I know that the LGBTQIA community in particular was a community that she lifted up through her, through her, her words and her, and her soul, basically. And she shared that with all of us. Um, she's like, I don't know, everybody's sort of spiritual grandmother. <laughs> I love that. I can't think of any other way to put it. What do you hope that viewers take away from this film? About? I think that like there's some there you know the way that the darkness in her life was handled. I, I think you took it right to the edge, and you know, and you do get a sense that this is a woman who was you know carrying uh, the trauma of sex abuse, uh, the trauma of uh, of, uh, of of dominating and 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 brutal uh, father in a lot of ways, uh, and that her relationship with men specifically you know, violent men was, was something she couldn't get out from under for a long time. So I think the, the power of music and creativity and, and just self-expression in the face of that and to triumph in those things is a powerful message. And I don't think a lot of people know about that. And I think the movie is delicate and diplomatic, but, but shows that stuff pretty well. You know, the, your 20s are difficult no matter who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, you're trying to find how you want to be on this planet in this lifetime. And she she was no exception. She really struggled to find her voice. You know, she had all those albums that just didn't work when she was, you know, when she was starting her career. And I, I think that this film is should inspire people to just trust themselves to, you know, in, in times of crisis, when you're trying to deal with your baggage, your, your, your past, your trauma, to know that inside of you is a person who can be healed mm. and who can go on to live a beautiful, healthy, glorious life. And I think, you know, Aretha healed herself with her art and she gave us a gift that will, will, will never stop resonating. Um, as I said while filming, I used to say, like, I know we all have a respect for Ms. Franklin, but by the time you're done with this film, I hope you have a newfound respect for her. Mm. I think that's all the time that I have with you, but thanks so much. Don't go yet, because I got to tell you about my HBO Max stand-up special coming out August 19th on HBO Max. It's called You Know What It Is, and uh, this comes out 
six days after respect. So check it out. Respect oh, also. the 13th. You know what it is on the 19th. <laughs>